What's up guys, Anthony here with Empire Music and EmpireMusicOnline.com. Uh, today, brand new instrument, this thing we have been waiting for for a while. Um, a lot of times you hear people uh, waiting with bated breath, as they like to say, um, for instruments that are like of the higher end ilk. This isn't, man, this is a squire. This is another, it's another banger out of the Paranormal series. Um, this is the first bass that came out in the series, so I'm super happy about that. I know you've probably seen a lot of Joe's videos that he did, like the Cabernet Atelis, um, all those different offsets that came out in the Paranormal series. And they all sold very, very well for good reason. Super affordable price point. They come in around the $400 mark. They're super unique instruments. I think what's really nice about that is that this line, the Paranormal series from Squire by Fender, allows players that might be, say, higher end players, intermediate, advanced players, but you want something a little bit different in your arsenal, this is, but you don't want to like go out and drop a thousand bucks, fifteen hundred bucks to get something that you might not, that might not be like an all the time instrument. This series really does that well, where it allows you to get a lot of a lot of vibe and a really cool instrument at a smaller price. This is kind of the opposite of that, though, because this is an everyday bass. Um, I'm really, really impressed with this. We just opened this box. We got a, a freight truck showed up maybe an hour ago. Got about 10, 12 of these bases in, two different finishes, which I'll show you the other one. There's this uh, butterscotch blonde, and there's a white, super nice. And um, right out of the box, it played super good. I'm always impressed with that when I pull a squire out of the box, and it plays really good. I did put a quick tweak on the neck. It had a, it was a little bit too strong. I put, I, I put a little bit of relief into the neck, tuned it up, and, it, and basically you're hearing it at that, at that state. Um, pretty impressive for that. We all know with Squires, that's not the case across the board. Five of those bases in that box might need more of an advanced setup to it. And like I always say, when you're buying a cheaper instrument, keep an eye on it. They're a little bit more temperamental than what you see in say our, our custom shop room or, or some of the American uh, series stuff. There's definitely some shortcomings that come at that price point, but not a whole lot and like a super playable, super giggable base. Um, so this is the Jazz Bass 54 out of the Paranormal series. It's a hybrid of everything. I'm confused by looking at it. I'm sure you're confused by it. And also my long windedness doesn't help that either. I understand that, but it's really, really cool. So check it out. As soon as you see it, I think Tele Bass, I think 50s P Bass, but it's a J. So it's, it's got kind of the J offset at the bottom but it's combining that with like kind of what they did in 54. The P bass in 54, they went to the contoured edges. They went away from just the straight slab body, but they still had that kind of telly pickup look to it. This has the contoured body, the, the, the telly look, but then it has two J pickups in it. Now, what era J bass is it, is it mimicking? Because you have stack knob. If you know me, you've seen my videos, I love stack knob J bass. I think they sound great. I think they look really, really cool. They're interesting. So this has like the 60 to 61 stack, stack knob configuration, concentric pots, two J pickups. J neck, it's a straight C on the back. So it's not the modern C, a little bit slimmer. This really has like the combination of new and old J, P, different J's. It's really kind of a mashup of everything that Fender's like almost ever done, which I think is super cool. It's a three piece body. It's so it's got a poplar inside, but then you see ash on the front and ash on the back. So basically there's a real small thin veneer we're guessing of ash to give it that, that the ash look. Um, it's pretty lightweight. This one is, um, it's got just the gloss finish over the whole thing. So, um, I know you're all waiting to hear what it sounds like. I'm sorry, I get excited about basses. I love them. Um, so sonically, it brings you kind of everything that you would expect out of a J bass. 
It also brings you everything you would expect out of a Squire J bass, which isn't always good. I'll show you what the good and the bad is during about that stuff too. And you always have to keep in mind, this is $400. So if you're expecting $4,000 worth of performance, you're not gonna get that. But you're getting a lot more than $400 worth of performance out of this thing easily. So uh, in the intro there, I had both pickups wide open and I had tone probably on about 60 on both of those. Um, when recording through our typical setup, which is a Fender Rumble 200, an SM94 microphone right on the front of the cab, no direct signal on it. So uh, back to that, it's kind of where I felt it sounded best as far as the wide open, like both pickups on, on full. Um, check it out. So that's wide open. If we're gonna solo just the front pickup, kind of get some of the P bass character out of just this, this neck pickup. Now you will notice, there's a little bit of buzz going on there. I'm sure you can hear that. It's a single coil pickup. You're going to have that. This isn't a P bass with the split single coil that kind of cancels the 60 cycle hum out. So that's, you're gonna have that with this bass. I don't care what kind of power you're running. I don't care what your setup is. There's gonna be a little bit of buzz with it. That's just what, what happens with it. As soon as a drummer hits a crash cymbal, you're not gonna hear that anymore, it's fine. Guitar player comes in, you're not gonna hear that. Notice right away that woofiness that kinda of comes out of it. That's all that P bass character to it. Um, and, and again, this is kinda of my first sit down with it, so we're experiencing this in real time kinda of together as far as what the bass is, is giving me from what I'm giving it. It plays really, really good. It's very, very comfortable. It's very responsive. It's a little bit spongy feeling. These bridges I've experienced, um, you know, they're Squire bridges. They're not like the real heavy duty thing. So the, the, the strings do have kind of a spongy feel to it. Uh, that's not good or bad. It just kind of is what it is. I don't typically mind it, but it's certainly there. At least I feel it. So, sorry, back to the, the, the P bass sound out of this thing. Brent's laughing at me. Don't laugh at me, man. Same thing with the pick, just front pickup. That tone's still back there on 70. And I'll show you why in a second. I feel like 60 and 70 is a sweet spot here. Now, why I have that tone down low, when I turn that up a little bit, for my taste, it gets a little bit harsh on the top end. I'd rather have that a little bit lower. And all the way off, Nice wide range that you're pulling from that tone control too, which is great. You get that really, really thuddy kind of muffled sound all the way to the super, super bright. But again, I feel like 60, 55. Even when I dig there, you're hearing, that's, that's a little too harsh for me. But again, something, that, did you just kind of get that out of a lower line bass? Um, just got to know how to control that. So now just the bridge pickup on it. So we're going to roll that off. Still got a little bit of buzz because again, we're in single coil mode there. 
Tone control, back 60, 55. Sounds great. Harmonics ringing out really clear. Third fret, even in between the uh, second and third. It's a hard one to get. A lot of cheaper, a lot of cheaper basses. You don't. That, that's a tough harmonic to get. It comes out. You know, it's voiced on this. That's super responsive. That's really, really nice. Now, tone all the way up. Again, a little bit harsh for me. Although it makes those harmonics ring even better. Then we'll go back to everything kind of full to give you the reference point. And here the buzz goes right away, thanks. We have both pickups at equal volume, so they're canceling all the hum out. I'm gonna roll those tone knobs back a little bit. Brandon, if I roll that tone knob back off the front pickup and leave just the tone on, it's a little bit too little. So, like 20% on the front pickup, about 70 on the bridge pickup. Little bit more on the front. Let's go to 40. That's a good sounding bass for 400 bucks right there. So yeah, that's it. Kind of our first look at the Paranormal series from Squire. This is the uh, Jazz Bass 54. It's a big old mashup of all the eras of Fender. Jazz Bass, P Bass, Stack Knob J, Regular J. Actually, I guess there's really no Regular J about it because there's no three knob layout you know, present on that thing. Great, 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 great bass for the money. Uh, finish wise, you got it in the white. You got it in the uh, Butterscotch Blonde, which I particularly love. I love that color. Um, super cool bass, great value at $399. Anything you need, call me at the shop, 412-343-5299. Email me, anthony at empiremusiconline.com. Um, anything you need, we're obviously available for you. Um, smash the like button down there on YouTube. Follow us on YouTube. Share it around all the social media. Brent's going to kill me because I went over 10 minutes like I always do, but at least I'm consistent. So we'll see you next time. Thanks.